Have you got an air fryer and you're just wondering, what am I gonna make for dinner? I got you. Today I'm sharing 17 of my family's favorite air fryer dinners just to give you a little mealtime inspiration. Hey there, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Kathy, and on this channel, I help people actually use their air fryer. And I've been air frying for about a year and a half now, so I went through all of these recipes that I have and picked out my very favorite dinners. A lot of these recipes are also in my e-cookbook. You can find more information about that at yummyairfryrecipes.com. Are you ready to get inspired for dinner time? Let's go. This is a sheet pan recipe that I adapted for the air fryer. This will serve about eight people so you can cut this recipe in half. I did cook it up in both of my air fryers. So I've got a whole red onion and then you can see this is the size of the squash and zucchini that I used. We chopped up those veggies and you'll see that it made about eight cups. Then we added four cups of chopped broccoli to it and now it's time to make the marinade. I've got three tablespoons of avocado oil. You could use olive oil as well. A third cup of balsamic vinegar. One to two tablespoons of honey. I'm lazy and I eyeballed it here. A teaspoon of dried basil. Half teaspoon of dried oregano. A teaspoon of kosher salt. And a half teaspoon of pepper. Just whisk that up. Then I chopped up about a pound and a half of boneless skinless chicken breasts. And I'm adding that to all my veggies. I've got a big bowl now, so I have room to stir it up. And then I just poured my marinade right over over the top and gave it a nice big stir. You'll notice my backdrop is different. Just FYI, we were doing a photo shoot at the same time, so I had to pull out my props. Just stir that marinade in. You'll definitely want that big bowl if you're doing the whole recipe. And then give it some time to marinate if you can. It just makes the taste even more amazing. You'll see I have about 10 cups of chicken and veggies here. So I used both of my air fryer pans. These are both nine by nine wide and I had four to five cups in each. And I just dumped it right there in the basket. You'll see not much glaze was wasted. Spread it out evenly. And then we're gonna start it at 370 for 10 minutes. While that was cooking, I went ahead and sliced up a bunch of grape or cherry tomatoes. Here we go after 10 minutes. You can see it's almost done, but not quite. So at this point, I decided I was gonna crank up the heat. I went to 400 for five minutes more. And at that point, it was perfectly done. If you want your veggies more tender, you can cook it for a little bit longer but this was just like the perfect tender for us when it's done cooking drop in your fresh tomatoes and give it a stir you can serve this right out of the pan or pour it in a separate bowl you guys this one is such a crowd pleaser you could serve it over rice or pasta or eat it all by itself it is so delicious this next recipe is amazing for chicken street tacos first we've got some seasoning start with two teaspoons of chili powder a teaspoon of cumin a teaspoon of garlic powder Powder, a teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of pepper, and just a pinch of cayenne pepper. Mix that up, and then you need two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Pat them dry, and then massage about two teaspoons of avocado oil all over the chicken. This is just gonna help hold the spices onto the chicken. You can trim these if you want to. Then I just dip each chicken thigh right there in my bowl of spices. That way each piece of chicken is evenly coated. Next, pop out your air fryer, cook these up at 400 for 12 minutes, then pull them out and set them in some foil to rest. You can enjoy these on tacos or on salad or all by themselves. So good and so easy. Honey garlic meatballs in the air fryer. This one was my husband's second favorite. First, start off with about 26 ounces of meatballs. Because they're frozen, I'm gonna start with the cute little frozen button, which is 350 for 10 minutes. It's gonna remind me to stir those up. While it's cooking, go ahead and make your glaze. You're gonna start with two tablespoons of brown sugar and 55 grams of honey. Then 68 grams of ketchup, I went a little over. A tablespoon of soy sauce one and a half teaspoons of minced garlic and just give that a stir and then pop it in the microwave for about a minute. Now here's my air fryer reminding me to shake my meatballs. I'm just gonna give that a stir and let them finish cooking and my glaze is ready. 10 minutes are done on the meatballs and the temperature, they are almost done cooking, which is perfect because I'm gonna put half of my glaze right on the meatballs and stir them around so they're lightly coated 
and then I'm just gonna cook it for three more minutes at 350. And these are done. They are perfectly glazed and you can add on the rest. You can enjoy these over rice or potatoes or enjoy them all by themselves. Basket cleanup, not too bad. This air fryer marinated pork tenderloin is amazing. First, I'm getting my little bag holder again and a gallon size Ziploc for my marinade. I'm starting with three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, two tablespoons of soy sauce, one teaspoon of lemon juice, two tablespoons of brown sugar, one and a half teaspoons of black pepper, one teaspoon of kosher salt, one teaspoon of dried rosemary, and then a half teaspoon of onion powder and half teaspoon of garlic powder. Then close up the bag and give that a nice little shake until it's nice and blended. And to that, I'm gonna add about a one and a half pound pork tenderloin. This pack has two tenderloins inside of it. I'm saving one for later. And here is what the one and a half pound tenderloin looks like. Throw it in the bag of marinade. You'll wanna let it marinate for at least 30 minutes, two hours if you can. Just don't go any more than eight to 12 hours. I sealed it up nice and tight so it's gonna sit and marinate nicely. After about 45 minutes, I put the parchment paper in the basket of my air fryer because this is one that will just be kind of tough to clean up afterwards. Now with this thinner part you'll see right here, you'll want to just kind of tuck it under so it doesn't overcook. And then we're going to pop it in at 400 for 10 minutes. After that, you'll see, oh my word, look how beautiful it looks. Rotate it. I like to flip it crosswise and flip it over. And then from here, depending on your air fryer, it's going to be six to 10 minutes more. This is when you're going to need that meat thermometer. Here we go. It is looking so gorgeous. Let it rest for at least five minutes before you cut into it. Thank heavens for the parchment paper, you guys. Look at that big mess. And here we go. It's been about five, 10 minutes and it is juicy and beautiful. This will probably serve about four people. It's incredibly easy and so good. For this one, you just need some protein. I'm using about a half pound of ground beef and just throw in some spices. I have a half teaspoon of each. Chili powder, cumin, smoked paprika, and stir that up. Then grab your flour tortillas and you're just gonna use a knife or pizza cutter and cut it right there just halfway in the middle and then it is ready to become a fold over wrap thingamajinger. So on a quarter of it, you're gonna put your protein on. And then for this one, I'm gonna add on some sour cream, just spread that out. Just eyeball it, do any sort of amount you'd like. And then add some cheese. I'm using some shredded queso cheese, yum yum. And a spoonful of some pico. And this is the fun part. Fold it in half, fold it in half again. And one more time. It's a little tricky, but it's actually easier than you think it will be. Check it out. We just whipped up a total of four of these with our toppings. These would be fun to do with your family. Everybody could make their own. And I was able to fit four right there in my air fryer. You do wanna be sure you spray the basket first because we want these to crisp right up there. Place those tortillas right in the basket and give it one more little spray. By the way, I'm using avocado oil today. Pop it in the air fryer and let's go 380 for about three minutes and we will check on it. Ooh, let's check it out. Nice, those are perfectly browned and they are hot, hello. Give them a quick little flip. And I don't even have to spray them, we still have oil on the other side and pop in for three more minutes. Look at that. Here are the beef taco wraps. It is time to taste test these. My favorite part. They look so good. These would be good dipped into other things, right? Right. Maybe salsa, guacamole, mm -hmm. whatever. Oh. Five stars. Five stars for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and way more crunch. And you could do chicken. You could do dessert no. wraps. Yes. Mm -hmm. That'd be good. Okay, this one's a winner. French toast sticks are awesome in the air fryer. So for best results, I do recommend this nice, thick Texas toast and cut each slice into thirds. You'll be using about 12 slices of bread for this. So you will be working in batches, of course. And what you'll want to do is dry them out a little bit first. So place them in a single layer in the air fryer and then turn it on to 350 for two minutes. While those are drying out, you're gonna make your mixture, which is gonna be one and a half cups of whole milk or half and half 
half, even regular milk will work okay. And then add half of a stick of butter. That's four tablespoons there. And you're gonna warm this up in the microwave for about one to two minutes until the butter is melted and the milk is nice and warm, but not too hot. I'm gonna add it to a larger measuring cup because I'm gonna be doing some blending here. Go ahead and add three egg yolks to your mixture. And since the milk is warm, I like to blend it up right away with my immersion blender or you can use a fork or a whisk. Next, add in a tablespoon of vanilla and then a half teaspoon of cinnamon and three to four tablespoons of brown sugar. Go ahead and give that a good mix. Then go ahead and pour that into a shallow glass dish. And now it's time to pull out the breadsticks. You can see they're just dried out enough. This is gonna help it so they don't get soggy. Go ahead and dump each little breadstick into your batter, flip them around and place them right in the air fryer. If you want to, you could also sprinkle on more cinnamon and sugar or an extra little crunch to those French toast sticks. Then go ahead and cook it at 350 degrees for about eight minutes. Be sure to flip it there at the halfway mark. It's a little hot, but I did use my hands. And if you decide you want it more crispy, throw it in for another minute or two. It's totally up to you. Then top it with syrup, powdered sugar, whatever you want. Crunchy chicken nuggets that require zero oil and they happen to be gluten-free. You are gonna love these. First, start with a pound of chicken. Cut this recipe in half if you don't need quite as much. All you're gonna do is chop it up into little bite-sized pieces. Just try to get them in even sizes. And if you want, you could make them even smaller than I did. You'll just shorten the cooking time a little bit. Give your chicken a quick wash. And then here's an important part. You'll want to pat the chicken dry. This is one important step for ultra crispy chicken. Then we're gonna mix up some coconut milk and pickle juice. And no, this will not make your chicken taste like coconut. Don't worry about that. You'll need one to one and a half cups of coconut milk and then about a half tablespoon of pickle juice. Just stir that up together and set it aside. Next, gather up your spices. You'll just need one teaspoon of each. I've got garlic powder, onion powder, and some paprika. You could even do smoked paprika if you have it. Then add in a half teaspoon of black pepper. And if you want, you can add a quarter teaspoon of salt and then anywhere from a pinch to no more than a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper if you want some heat. Now don't worry about scrambling and writing everything down. I have the entire recipe listed for you down in the video notes below. Plus this recipe is included in my air fryer recipe book. You can find that at yummyairfryerecipes.com. Now it's time for the crispy part. Dump about five to six cups of corn flakes in a Ziploc bag or a food processor and you're gonna crush that up. Now you can use any brand of cornflakes. This is where your gluten-free option comes in. And once that's all crushed, go ahead and drop your seasonings right in the bag and give it a good old shake. And then dump it out onto a large plate or a big old bowl. And then just get about a half to one cup of cornstarch. That is going to be step one of your station. So now it's time to coat the chicken pieces. Just drop some chicken in that cornstarch and toss it around. And then you're gonna dunk it right into your coconut milk mixture. And then just toss it into your cornflake mixture. And then you're just gonna repeat the process. Drop those back into the cornstarch, back into the coconut milk, back into the cornflake mixture. I usually do about five or six pieces of chicken at a time. And yes, it's a bit messy, but come on, it's so worth it. Now set those pieces in a single layer in your air fryer basket. And psych, you do not need oil. Leave that in your cabinet. There is no oil in this recipe. Woo woo. Pop it in the air fryer, set your temperature to 400, and set the timer for eight minutes. Now, I got the newer model of the Kasori, and it's got this cute little button that I can press to remind me to shake or turn my food at the halfway point. And here we go. Oh, they're looking good. Just give them a flip. Now, I'm a mother of eight, and my fingers have been conditioned to handle high heat, so I'm gonna just flip them with my fingers. You can use silicone tongs instead. Then pop this back in. Look, my air fryer starts all by itself. Well, let's take a look. Oh, yes. <laughs> they look so beautiful. Next, we're going to cook up some bell peppers, sweet onions, baby potatoes, and some Adele's chicken sausage together. This recipe is so flexible, so if you can mix up the sausage, mix up the veggies, just follow these guidelines and make it yours. So first, I'm going to de-seed and chop up two peppers. I love the sweetness and the color of the red and orange peppers, but pick out whatever you like. 
Set those aside in a large bowl and then peel and chop a sweet onion into quarters. Just cut it in half and then in half again. Now, if your onion is bigger than mine, you might wanna cut it into eighths. And then just separate your onion. You want the pieces to be about as big or a little bit bigger than your pieces of pepper. You could use a regular onion or even a red onion. Toss those into your bowl with the onions and then it's time to dry off the potatoes that you washed. We wanna get rid of the moisture because we're gonna be adding oil and obviously oil and water don't mix well. Now I'm gonna just stir in one or two teaspoons of avocado oil. You can use any oil that you prefer. I personally like the avocado oil because it's tasteless, has great benefits, and it has a high smoke point. And now it's time to preheat your air fryer. My air fryer has a preheat button that sets it at 400 for five minutes. When the air fryer is ready, just drop your veggies right into the basket. You don't have to grease the basket because we already have the oil right there on the veggies. Then get your baby potatoes and drop those right over the vegetables. You'll just wanna make sure those potatoes are fairly small. If they're not, you can cut them into quarters and just make sure they're about the same size. I'm gonna spread my potatoes out so they aren't touching and then I'm gonna get my Misto sprayer. Now I use this instead of a can sprayer that you buy at the store. Number one, because those sprayers have propellants and other chemicals in it that are not good for the air fryer basket. Plus I don't want them in my food. So I bought this one off of Amazon. I've been really liking it over the last couple of months and I just put my avocado oil in it. It's cool because it has a pump and it acts as an aerosol sprayer, but there's no propellants in it. I'm just gonna lightly spray the tops of the potatoes and then we're gonna cook this at 370 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes. I'm giving a range of time because every air fryer is slightly different. Some of them have a lower wattage than others. Mine is a 1700 watt, so it cooks a little bit hotter and faster than ones that are just like a thousand watt. While that's cooking, get about 12 to 14 ounces of pre-cooked sausage. I love the Adele's brand because it's natural and not full of additives. Plus they have amazing flavors. This is the one I'm using today. Now I just like to chop my sausages into quarters. If you wanna go with a thinner coin shaped sausage, you can. You will just wait and put those in the last three to four minutes of the total cooking time. If you want, you can stop at the halfway point and give those veggies and potatoes a little stir. You can see my veggies are starting to crisp up beautifully. Go ahead and let that finish cooking. And then after that first 10 to 12 minute cook cycle, we're gonna throw the sausages in. Unless you cut them smaller, you're still gonna wanna wait. Just separate the sausages so they're not touching each other. That way they can roast beautifully. Then cook it at 370 degrees for about another 10 minutes. Again, I wanted to peek on them after about five minutes of cooking. The potatoes were very close to being fork tender, but I knew they needed a little bit more time. I just gave everything a one more quick stir and then let them cook up that last five minutes. And then check it out, they were perfect. I love this recipe. Number one, cleanup is a breeze. Plus I didn't have to spend time adding extra seasonings or anything. All the flavors just blended together so nicely. You can literally have dinner on the table in less than 30 minutes. This is everything you need for this recipe. Now it might look like a ton of ingredients, but I promise it just goes together so quickly. Start with two sweet potatoes that you've washed and dried and you're gonna just stab these. I do have one little problem here. I've got one sweet potato that's a lot bigger than the other. So that just means I'm gonna need to kind of keep an eye on things. This guy here, he's gonna be done cooking before this larger one. Then you just wanna massage some oil into your potato. What it does is it just really helps make your potato so moist inside you won't believe it. Place these right in your air fryer basket. And then I just like to sprinkle on a little bit of salt. I love using this Redmond Real Salt, so good. Then pop this in the air fryer. And we're gonna start with 380 for 20 minutes. And while that's cooking, go ahead and cut up a half pound of chicken. That's usually about one chicken breast. Then you'll add in a half of a pepper that you chop up into bite-sized pieces. Then just a half cup of red onion, a half cup of frozen corn, a half cup of rinsed and drained black beans, and then just a half tablespoon of any oil that you want. I prefer the Chosen Foods avocado oil. And then here are your seasonings. It's just a half teaspoon of each. Cumin, brown sugar, paprika, chili powder, and a dash of black pepper there. And then just mix all of that up. All right, sweet potatoes are cooking beautifully. I'm gonna just flip those around. Ouch, hot. And now I'm gonna pour in my chicken and vegetable mixture. Spread this out around the potatoes, pop it back in the air fryer, 
Now I'm gonna go up to 380, hit my shake reminder so I can check on in about seven minutes and we will see how that works. All right, time to give this a peek. Just give that chicken and those veggies a little stir. Okay, I'm gonna just check this one potato. That one's probably almost done. Big one is not done. And I just wanna peek at the chicken temperature. The chicken is done. So I'm gonna just pull these potatoes out and put my veggies and my chicken in this bowl. Now I'm just gonna let these potatoes finish up and I can just cover this with foil to keep it nice and warm. Okay, and while that finishes up cooking, I just chopped up some avocado here, some cherry tomatoes, and then I'm making this really yummy dressing. I've just got some of my homemade barbecue sauce and you can mix it up with sour cream or Greek yogurt and it becomes like this yummy barbecue dressing. And then if you have cilantro, you could chop some of that up. These are the toppings for this amazing dinner. Oh, guess what? Haley found some cilantro in the fridge and she's using the herb scissors to cut that up. Yay, Haley! Cut open that sweet potato. I like to mush up my sweet potato a little bit, then place on some of the chicken and veggies. There is a lot here. Add in some tomatoes. Here's a little cilantro. Drop on a little avocado. And for the ultimate presentation, my friend Kristen from Six Sister Stuff taught me about putting like sour cream and different, whoops, <laughs> different thicker dressings in a plastic bag with a little hole and just squirt it over the top. It looks so pretty. For this one, you need a pound of meat. I'm using ground turkey, just a little bit of onion, Worcestershire sauce, dill pickles. I'm just using dill pickle relish, some American cheese, and okay, I'm sorry, it's actually six. Uh, we need egg roll wrappers, but five ingredients for what goes in the middle. So just cook up the meat. I really love this meat chopper tool. It's important that you chop these into fine little cooked pieces. Like the largest shouldn't be any bigger than a marble. Then it's time to drain your meat. I learned this super cool trick from one of my YouTuber friends. Her name's Julia Pacheo. And you put paper towel around a wooden spoon and then look. And you just soak up all of your grease right there with the paper towel. It's the coolest trick. Okay, next you're gonna add in a quarter cup of diced onions and a quarter cup of diced pickles. And I told you I just used some dill pickle relish because I'm a lazy cook. And one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and just mix that all up. It's cooking through and smelling fantastic. If you have any leftover onions, just bag them up, put them in the freezer and save them for another meal. Then the next step is to add, it said six slices of American cheese and just stir that up until it melts through. That's really gross looking. <laughs> to my friends on the other side of the pond, do you have American cheese over there? It melts really nicely and adds a different flavor to the meat mixture. Just cook that up until it's nice and blended and just take it off the heat and you're gonna let it cool slightly. Okay, I'm gonna prep my basket by just lightly spraying it with oil. Okay, then I've just got these egg roll wrappers and I put my filling mix here in a bowl. I have about, it's about three and a half cups of filling. So if you don't use it all, you could freeze it for later. And you're just gonna scoop on some filling right in that lower thirds of your egg roll wrapper. Fold it up, fold the insides, and then roll it right up. And if you want to, you could use some egg wash to kind of dab that closed and glue it shut. Then just set it right in your air fryer basket and let's see how many we can get in here. And ta-da, I got seven in here. I gave these a light little mist of oil. And just so you know, I have about this much mix left. I believe this will get me about four or five more egg rolls. We're gonna pop this in the air fryer. And let's cook this at 380 for about eight minutes. And I'm gonna do the shake reminder, actually I'm gonna do seven minutes, and I'm gonna do the shake reminder to make sure I don't overcook those. Let's take a peek. Oh, they look good. They are ready to give a little flip. You can still see they have oil because we greased the other side of the pan, so I don't need to add any more. I'm gonna pop these back in and we'll let them finish cooking. Here we go. And those look fantastic. Mmm, that is so good and so close to the real thing. These would also freeze and reheat really nicely too. Mmm, so good. Get ready, these air fryer hampers are so good. 
This time I had some really nice patties that were a third pound, and so it was a little snug there in my basket. But as long as they're not overlapping, it's okay if they touch because they're gonna shrink a little bit. Normally I can get four in the air fryer. So you just pop it in at 370, and it's gonna be about 15 to 20 minutes. But, so I don't forget, I'm doing 10 minutes. Here they are after 10 minutes looking divine. And I have a new trick for you. If you want some sauteed onions, go ahead and throw those in your basket at this point. Give it a little spray with oil and throw a little salt on. And then I went ahead and cooked it for seven more minutes at 370. While it's cooking, get your toppings ready and check it out. You've got your roasted onions. These were done to perfection. I had one that wanted cheese on their hamburger. Now I haven't done cheeseburgers in my air fryer yet, so I put a toothpick in there to make sure the cheese wouldn't fly around. I wanted to test it out to see if I needed it, and lo and behold, I did not. In there after two minutes, it is beautiful and so, so good. You want toasted buns? I've got that too. Just wipe down your air fryer a little bit to get some of that extra grease. And I tested it out with my bun side up and bun side down and the bun side up was more crispy. Oh my goodness, you guys, these are so good. Who says you can't have homemade burgers in the winter time, right? And if you want an extra added touch, use my homemade fry sauce and put it on your burger. So good. And look, the cleanup really is not that bad. You're gonna love these. Forget KFC, my friends. You've gotta try these out. Today I've got two and a half pounds of chicken tenders. It's about 14 tenders here in my bowl. And because I have so many, I'm gonna double this recipe. Then I need some buttermilk. I'm gonna use a cup, but the recipe calls for a half cup. Then I'm gonna just add that to my chicken and let that sit and marinate for about 30 minutes. Start with a half cup of flour and a half cup of panko. Then add a teaspoon of paprika, a half teaspoon of celery seed, a half teaspoon of ground ginger, a half teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of pepper, a quarter teaspoon of oregano, a quarter teaspoon of thyme, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. And lastly, an eighth a teaspoon or a pinch of cayenne pepper. Do more if you want more heat. And just give those a whisk. Pull the chicken out of the buttermilk, drip off the excess, and plop it down in that breadcrumb mixture. Preheat your air fryer at 400, place the tenders in, and give it a spray with some oil. Cook these up at 370 for 12 minutes. I'm pressing my snowflake button so it will remind me to flip these at the halfway point. And there's my reminder. I'm just gonna flip these over real quick. I'm gonna spray a little bit more oil just to help crisp up the other side. And here we go. These are done perfectly. They're juicy and crispy and amazing. I have everything chopped here. I've got some pineapple, some zucchini. I just didn't wanna bore you with watching me chop. Here's those green onions we did earlier. And I put all the ingredients out and I like to put the measuring spoons and tools right by what I'm gonna do. It just makes it go so much faster. Okay. I've got my freezer bag hooked on and I'm gonna start with the marinade. So we're gonna start with a whopping one cup of soy sauce and then it calls for a cup of sugar, but I'm just gonna narrow that down. That's about a half cup there. There's all my sliced green onions, minced garlic clove. I'm just doing a half teaspoon of the jarred stuff. And here's that sesame seed oil again. You just need a teaspoon and then one can of coconut milk, but I really love buying this big, I don't know, cardboard box of it. So this is equivalent to about two cans. You just shake it up because I love having it on hand to like throw in smoothies. Oh, so good. And I'm just gonna kind of eyeball and do half of this little box here and then take it off the clips, seal it up and we'll mix it up. I also like to kind of rub it around to just help that brown sugar dissolve. Now we will throw it back on the little clips. You could also like put your bag in a bowl or if you have a buddy to help you out. Now it's ready for the veggies. Then drop in those veggies and the fruit. And then this is enough marinade here for about three pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. So if you want to, if you have a smaller group of people, you can split this into two bags and then split up your chicken here. But chicken thighs, you know, sometimes they're small and you can eat more than one. And we are loaded up in here. Let's mix that all together. Same thing, let out a little air once you have it mixed up well. Well, not a little air. Let out a lot of air once you have it mixed up well. Flatten it out. 
and it's ready to freeze. It's the Sunday craziness around here and I've got this Hawaiian chicken that's been thawing out since last night. I just put it in this big old bowl so it wouldn't thaw out and melt everywhere. And since everybody's home tonight, I'm doing three cups of rice and you're gonna do two parts coconut milk and one part water. For the Instant Pot, you wanna do one and a quarter cup of liquid to every cup of rice. So I just filled up the rest of my little bottle here of coconut milk with water and I got every last drop out. Mix it up and I'm cooking high pressure for eight minutes. And to make it easier to get all of this mixture out of here, just pour all the contents right there into the bowl. Let the marinade drain out. So I've got some chicken in here. I'm just gonna throw the veggies right over the top and around the chicken. And we're gonna cook it up at 380 for 16 minutes. I'm gonna hit my shake reminder on so I can flip those around. And since I do still have a lot of chicken left, I'm either gonna need to work in batches or I can pull out my other air fryer and cook these up too. Sundays are the one day everybody's home, no one's working, no one's at school, no one's doing sports, we're all together. So I am pulling out my second air fryer so it's all done at the same time because we're going to sit at the table and eat. Okay, let's take a peek here. It sure does smell amazing. We'll let that finish up. Alrighty. Oh, that looks so good. And a quick temperature check shows that these are done. Logan, how is it? Steak in the air fryer, it's a bomb diggity. This is my condensed version of my tutorial. I have all my tips and tricks linked for you down in the video description box below. Start with the right steak. Two great options for the air fryer are a ribeye steak or a New York strip steak. Once my steak is thawed out, I pull it from the fridge, remove it from the packaging. I'm gonna let it rest for 20 to 30 minutes before I even start the cooking process. Pat your steak dry, just blot some paper towels down right there on the steak. Massage just a tiny bit of oil on the steak. I'm talking like a teaspoon or less, my friends. Just massage that all over your meat and it's gonna help the seasoning adhere to your steak. Then it's time to season. Now you can use any seasoning mix that you want, but I personally just just season it with some kosher salt. And guess what? You need to season it like you mean it, y'all. It's okay to be a little heavy handed with the salt. And for me personally, I like to add more seasoning after the steak is done cooking while it's resting. Preheat your air fryer for 10 minutes at 400 degrees. And then as soon as it's done, I place my steak right in the air fryer basket. And you should hear a nice sizzle. Do you hear that? It's amazing. Do not use parchment paper here, y'all. So I'm popping my steak in the air fryer at 400 for six minutes. And if you have a thicker steak, you might wanna bump it up to seven or eight minutes. So after that first six minutes is up, I like to flip them and rotate the direction that they're laying in the air fryer just to make sure the cooking is nice and even steven. And at this point, the remaining cook time is going to depend on how thick your steak is and what level of doneness you want. I actually let my steak rest right there in the air fryer basket. And this is the point where I drop a spoon full of the garlic herb butter right on top of my steak and let it melt as it rests. So since I cooked it for 12 minutes, I'm gonna let it rest for six minutes and holy cow, it's so amazing. The mustard salmon is delicious. You first wanna make a foil sling because the salmon is such a delicate meat. So my sling is about four inches wide and it's gonna fit the width of the basket and I've got these cute little handles to help me out. And then next you're gonna make your sauce which is simply a tablespoon of Dijon mustard or 15 grams, and then two tablespoons of honey, which comes to 42 grams. Blend that up and then you wanna save about a tablespoon to drizzle on the top afterwards. Now here are my salmon fillets. I got these from Costco. These are a little bit thicker. Of course, the thicker your salmon, the longer it will take to cook. Go ahead and pat them dry with a paper towel and then I sprinkled on some salt and pepper and just massage that in. And then here is my glaze. I'm just gonna brush it on both sides of the salmon. Eat. Now I'm getting my hands dirty. And then since I still have it on that foil sling, I'm just going to lift it right into the air fryer basket. Just tuck in the sling so the foil doesn't blow up into the fan. And I'm going to put on a little bit more glaze. And then I'm just using my preset button right here for salmon. It's 350 for eight minutes. And there we go. I did not even have to rotate my salmon. It is perfectly done. Use the foil sling to just lift that out of the basket. Easy peasy and so amazing. Get your extra glaze and you can pour that right over the top of salmon. This one is so good. 
if you're not a fan of meatloaf, you've got to try this recipe. My husband, who is very picky at times, actually loves this meatloaf recipe. Start off with about 25 to 30 saltine crackers and you're gonna just crush those up as small as you can. Then add a third cup of milk and give it a quick little stir and let the milk absorb the rest of the crackers. Then the secret ingredient is fresh parsley. You guys have got to give it a try. You only need about a quarter to a half cup of fresh parsley and then stir in two lightly beaten eggs, two teaspoons of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, Dijon mustard, just a tablespoon there. I'm just eyeballing it. And then three tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. I'm pretty sure I said that wrong. One and a half teaspoons of salt and a half teaspoon of black pepper. Then yes, that looks disgusting. Just stir it up and you're gonna add two pounds of meat. Now today I'm using lean ground turkey. Do you have picky eaters like me? If I just gave them straight up ground turkey, they would revolt. But if I mix it and hide it with other fancy ingredients, they have no idea. I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to cook up this meatloaf. The first way involves a cookie scoop and this cute little silicone mold to make meatloaf bites. It's about four tablespoons in each little cup. And then you just pop that entire mold right into the air fryer. And I'm gonna start off at 370 degrees for nine minutes. Now I still have some meat, so I filled up my other bites mold. And then I'm gonna make two little loaves out of the rest of my meat. You can see I've got my parchment paper to help keep the basket clean. And then here's the trick if you're doing meat in the air fryer. You need it to be the same thickness throughout. So just shape a flat mound of meat, make Make sure the edges aren't thinner than the middle. 375 for 15 minutes. While that's baking, I have an amazing glaze you've got to make. It's two thirds cup of ketchup, which is about 180 grams, two tablespoons of brown sugar, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar, and then whisk that up. Now we'll take a peek at the bites. They are almost done, you can see. So it's the perfect time to add the glaze for the last few minutes of cooking. Just spread that on and then bake it at 380 for about six more minutes. And and here they are, they are sizzling, they are done, and they smell divine. Let them cool for just a minute and then you can just push from the bottom of the silicone to pop them out. Oh, and I forgot to mention that I did grease the egg bite molds, but nice and easy cleanup there. And my cute little loaves, well, they are done too. The parchment paper made cleanup so easy and it is perfection and so good. Another amazing all-in-one basket dinner idea that's so easy. Start with two small chicken breasts and cut them into bite-sized pieces. An onion cut into slices, one or two small zucchinis, and my favorite part, mushrooms cut into quarters, a teaspoon of ground ginger, a quarter teaspoon of pepper, and a tablespoon of garlic powder. You know I love my garlic. Then pour in a quarter cup of soy sauce and about one to two tablespoons of oil. Give that a good stir. And then just pop it right into your air fryer. Level it out and oh, you know it, we're gonna cook it up at 380 for about 20 minutes. While that's cooking, I'm gonna make the yum yum sauce. It's a cup of mayonnaise. I'm just eyeballing it here a teaspoon of tomato paste or ketchup. And then the seasonings are a half teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of sugar, and a quarter teaspoon of paprika. Then add in a tablespoon of melted butter, and guess what you guys, I forgot to add a quarter cup of water to this. So it should be runnier, but it's okay. This still tasted fantastic. Here we are at the halfway point, and oh my goodness, it is looking really nice. And let's pull out the instant rate thermometer to see how that chicken's doing. And you know what? It's looking good, so I don't think it needs 10 more minutes. I'm gonna reduce the time down to five more minutes. And we'll check on it. And look at this, it's looking fantastic. And if you've made it this far, good job. I've actually got 10 air fryer breakfast ideas for you right here. And you'll probably like this one too. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.